Thank you. Um, we move to the part of the panel where we all have our disclaimers that we actually have uh, dogs in these fights. Um, like Don, I'm, uh, I and the Campaign Legal Center are uh, involved in uh, uh, these cases uh, as amici and making uh, arguments on one side or the other, and Allison can do her own disclaimer when we get there. Uh, it occurs to me, listening to all this, that I hope those of you who are lawyers in this audience are busy billing this to somebody, because <laughs> otherwise it's an awfully complicated discussion to sit through. I also hope that uh, those of you who are not lawyers have now been convinced that you do not want to go to law school, <laughs> because this truly is watching the sausage being made. Uh, what I you heard Rick talk about the Roberts Court. I think in this area, I would refer to it as the jurisprudence of the post-O'Connor Court, because what we really are talking about here, and which makes it a very interesting subject to law students and, and law professors in terms of the behavior of judges and uh, the value of stare decisis, we're talking about what a court does when one vote essentially has changed. And uh, Justice O'Connor, uh, as you heard, uh, was essentially the fifth vote in the McConnell decision uh, and changed her position on the uh, Austin case to get there. Uh, her departure from the court, uh, her replacement uh, by Justice Alito, uh, raises the question of, is the court's jurisprudence based on the decisions it has made and the rationale, or is it subject to change as the justices change? Now, I know that sounds a little loaded, so let me take some of the load off by saying that critics of McConnell will, of course, point out that they don't think there was a very clear decision in McConnell, that the votes were there, but it's not clear what the rationale was and the reasoning, and that, therefore, uh, Justice O'Connor's uh, successors uh, have less to work with uh, or are bound less by that decision. But then we had the Roberts confirmation uh, hearings in which he made a point of talking about the value of stare decisis and saying that he believed also that court decisions ought to be narrow rather than broad. They ought to deal uh, with the narrowest possible result to decide the case. So you have this interesting situation where the Chief Justice is on record as talking about uh, value of stare decisis and narrow decisions. Uh, and you've seen, I think, uh, in some of the cases that Rick outlined, uh, that influence in the Chief Justice uh, in independent and um, uh, controlling opinions, as in Wisconsin Right to Life too, uh, laying out a, a standard that does not overrule the previous precedent. And you've seen passionate uh, comments in uh, the opinions of, for instance, uh, Justice Scalia saying this is all uh, phony. You, you are overruling it. Why don't you just stop being a chicken and say you're overruling it? So you've got this ongoing debate, and I think those issues are in all three cases that Don has outlined and that I've been asked to talk about a little bit uh, as they uh, reach the court. The, I will say, given our time, I'm going to abbreviate my remarks uh, a, a bit so that we have some time uh, left for questions and, and more general discussion. So I'll just hit what I think are the highlights in these three cases and where I would hope uh, that the court would go in them. Uh, the first one, the uh, Citizens United case, uh, as Don correctly said, I think everybody came away from the oral argument with a feeling that the case had evolved significantly from where it started in its uh, early briefs. Uh, there is an opportunity here for a narrow decision by the Supreme Court. It'll be interesting to see if they take that opportunity. Uh, I think they should, and that is to simply say that this speech, this on-demand 90-minute video, uh, was not, in fact, is not covered by the statutory provision on broadcast cable or satellite communications. Uh, that it is somehow different than what the Act covers, not just or even because it is 90 minutes, uh, although that was a big part of the oral argument, is 90 minutes different than 30-second ads that Congress was allegedly trying to reach? How do we know they weren't trying to reach longer videos, et cetera? Uh, but that 
its method of delivery with the video on demand requiring the affirmative decision of the viewer to say I want to order that uh, is fundamentally different than the sort of undifferentiated, unasked for advertising uh, that McCain-Feingold was trying to cover. So that, it seems to me, uh, is the uh, perhaps ideal outcome of uh, Citizens United and avoids uh, the broader questions. Uh, and as you've heard, in order to get to those broader issues, the court essentially has to overrule Austin, which it's just upheld in McConnell. Uh, I think that's a significant U-turn and, and perhaps not uh, attractive. Uh, I did want to comment on Rick's uh, introduction in which he talked about uh, Austin suffering death by a thousand cuts in uh, Wisconsin right to life. I think that's really open to debate at this stage. There's no question that it can be read that way. It may have that result. Uh, it depends really on the different or supplemental ongoing argument of exactly what the functional equivalent of express advocacy is. Uh, the Chief Justice, in his uh, opinion, uh, essentially the deciding opinion, uh, talked about whether an ad uh, met the test of the functional equivalent of express advocacy. That test itself was somewhat murky uh, in the Chief Justice's opinion. Uh, the FEC has regulations on it, and the FEC has, uh, as commissioners present today can attest, a ongoing uh, battle over what that test is and how, how broad or narrow it is, uh, resulting in a whole series of 3-3 ties. Uh, and then the uh, commentators on the FEC have an ongoing battle over whether the 3-3 ties decide the issue or merely leave it for another day. So we don't really know where Wisconsin right to life leaves us. I think you could see, under different circumstances, an FEC saying, no, a lot of this is still covered. Uh, and then that issue moves to the courts. Uh, or we could see, as Rick has, I think, predicted, uh, that Wisconsin right to life essentially opens up uh, all this advertising. And that will depend on the, the commission and the courts. So that's the uh, Citizens United case. Uh, the